guys, Dan the Wolfman here. Thank you for checking out my videos. Go to thecombatsystem.com for all your mixed martial arts needs. And please subscribe to my YouTube page. Okay, guys. The spine, the neck. If I can break his structure, the spine, the neck, the legs, but basically he's with the spine, and add weight to it, this man falls. Right here, he's pretty strong unless you know how to do it, which I'll do later. If I tilt him back, come this way, and drop weight on the structure, it's very easy to take him down. Okay? So we're going to play with that in a second. Combatively, okay, what we're doing now is applying like combatives, martial arts, Russian martial arts, learning how to apply an MMA in your grappling. I could be wrestling with this guy in here, but if I can get to his head or even his chin here, I hit two points, remember? Stirring the pot. I work two points and in three dimensions, okay? Three dimensions, not just two dimensions. You guys who want to be good martial artists, start thinking all the way around. Just tilt his head back. And if I was really doing this, I could step behind him. If I was doing bodyguard work, I could do a walk by. He's a threat. Tilt him this way and take him down. Again, I could break his structure this way. I could go here, sliding him down. All I got to do is tilt him back a little bit and add weight to his structure to collapse him. He's not a, now he's a pull. But if I get him back a little bit, he's weak. You know that from when you're trying to rear naked choke someone standing or if you're doing bouncing work. Okay, you know that. And you had a 300 pound guy, he's pulling all the bouncers this way. Well, you hit him and you break his structure backwards and now he's not so strong. If he's forward, we're strong, we fight this way. We're not so good at fighting backwards, okay? So, simple is, is I want you to play with the head tilt, which is gonna use your forearm here and back. And this is just to explain some of the stuff that we're going over later. It could also be stuff like this. Okay, you see what I did to him? I just got him back a little bit and added some weight. Uh, let's hit each other a little bit in the clinch. Okay. So we're just here. We're in the over-under position. Common in MMA, right? So we're here and we're knee. Okay. Once you learn this kind of stuff, if you add your hits to it to just get him, his nervous system to react, then I can take him down very easily. Okay. By a simple deep hit to the body, I make him go from this strong structure to this not as strong structure. That's all I need. So this is pretty advanced stuff. You're not going to have that much time to play with it. But I want you to see what I can do with hitting. Okay? Instead of just surface hits, from here, I'm going to learn to hit them deep. And then I went high with my shoulder and dropped the weight. Okay? So if you can get takedowns energy efficient from over under, you're really ahead of the game. It could be, it could be in here, and now I work on just hitting this guy, knee and his legs and playing the normal game, right? But Maybe I want to get him to react to karate chops. I'm in a karate move. I'm going to go hit shoulder pop. Oh. Okay. I'm working three dimensions. Hit him here to get him off. Hit him up and then drop the weight. Okay. I, there was different directions here. There was a force here. There was a force up and back. And then there was weight down, cutting a different angle. So you got to start thinking like pyramids and stuff. I'm sorry. But you're, the, you're the best for this. Okay, um, so anytime we're in here, you could think of hitting, I like to hit here and lock the hip. See how easy that was? I just clap down. If you had a strong structure here, there's no way. See his butt's back. But if I hit him here and get him up a little bit, or right now because he's so bent over, maybe I'm going to hit the plank here. I'm going to, he's not weak. Whoa, wouldn't that be great in a fight if you could do that, right? Yeah. No energy wasted for a double leg or pickup or anything. So, what I want you to do, you got two minutes to play with your partner. I want you each to just play with the head tilt a couple times. If you want to do like a drive by with the leg behind, get him here, here, and eventually he's going to just teach you all kinds of, of stuff. Uh, grab a guillotine. I'm going to just learn to like my body because I spun him three dimensionally. I worked high and low at the same time. That's during the pot thing. Hopefully, some of you are going, whoa, there's, there's something to it now. Okay. Well, in MMA, this isn't what I necessarily do, but if it was instinctively self-defense situation, I might do it. It lands me where I can work on it, too. But if we had a guillotine, no guard, no guillotine, unless he's Marcelo, Marcelo Garcia and he's got a high level guillotine, okay? But in general, our men are regular guillotines, even the crank-up guillotine. Not a lot if he doesn't have guard or half guard at the very least. So I just don't want to get, there's other ones for MMA. You want to do that? Okay. There's just hangman and all kinds of stuff. 
But just breaking stretch stuff. If I got here all of a sudden. No. I work with whatever I need to work with. Okay, so three dimensions. Think angles. Think breaking the structure of his spine or his neck, twisting it, and taking it down. So just play with the head tilt a couple times. You got two minutes. And just play. Really, you're not fighting. Just play. And if you're more advanced, the last minute you want to go over under and go, oh, if I hit him here, he goes here, and then boom, go ahead. Okay. It takes a while to get to the level. And I've done it to some pretty big guys from the over under. We're here and I needed to take this guy down. He's been in trouble, he's mouthing off to someone. I'm working security or something. Okay? It's not that hard because I destabilized his spine. You gotta listen to the concepts I'm talking about. I didn't just yank him and go, I'm as strong as I can be. It wouldn't work as good. Okay, do you mind I'm gonna yank you as strong as I can be? This is what you guys want to do. Didn't work so well. This is what I did. I come up, hey buddy, it's not a problem, is it? Can you relax? And I stay behind him, I'm watching the red elbow, I'm walking down, let's walk out. He's starting to turn and become too much. No problem. <laughs> Did anyone see his body shake a little bit or my arm shake a little bit? Vibration, I destabilized his body. Okay? If he had a side yeah, headlock on me and you sit in, same thing. Okay? You maybe start hitting me, whatever. I can teach you all the like old Gracie Jiu Jitsu defenses and everything else, but it might just destabilize and you take him down. And you can work and do whatever you feel like. But the point is to try and learn a little bit. Okay. Um, now I'm going to show stuff. He's on a single. Okay, you don't want to do that. Is it worse? All right. So you're here. Okay. Now, if a guy's in, in, this is not bad position. If a guy is really, really low on your leg, there's other things you need to do, basics. Okay. I'm showing you some advanced stuff if his head's in different positions. If he's low or his, his head's really, his forehead might be a little up, but it's not, but it's pretty low to my leg, okay, you're going to do basics. You're going to get this to the outside, you might throw a wizard in, get heavy on the head, and flying knee him and get the knockout of the knife, okay, or you're just going to do double heavy on the head and sprawl this out and work regular basics. I don't have time to go over wrestling stuff tonight. What I'm showing you is some slightly different things. Okay. Basics would be, and you don't like it in the center. Anytime you can hook around and do like a round kick, that's what you want to do. You want to get the leg to the outside. There's wrestling basic stuff you can do if he's pinched really tight between the legs. But if it's here, you don't want it there, you want to get it out here. In general rule, I like to throw some kind of overhook in, wizard in right away, and you want some kind of hedge control. Very simply, if you want to push down on it and sprawl out and do all the basics, like I said, that's fine. But I'm here. I'm going to get this outside. If Scotty's head is more up, okay, now watch what I'm going to do. Ready? Yeah. Okay. Now, if you do that in MMA, it'd be pretty cool. <laughs> right? So we're here. I'm going to get it to the outside. Now you play the BJ Penn game. Scotty, keep your forehead up and drive me a little bit like you're taking me back to the cage with it. I'm going here. Um, so if you need a hop because he's driving in, I, I'm not saying you're going to look like super awesome right off the bat. you got to have your basics. I might have to hop and do my balance, keep my leg away from a, a double coming to the far leg, blocking the hip and stuff like that. But what I'm doing is what you just learned, okay? What I'm doing is what you just learned with that head tilt, but that, that alone is not enough. What I need to do is what I call a spinal wipe. I'm going to hit at least an inch and a half, two inches deep to his body, inch and minimum. I have to get to the spine. I can't just do this. It skips off like a stone in water. But if I do this, do you feel it? Yeah. Now, if I do this, it's very effective. Okay? Okay. Now, see, he's, he's low. He's in a, a good position if you wanted to chain pull me and whip me right now. Okay, it's going to be hard. I'm going to get out here and get on the head and the basics. This is if the guy's the f head low on the leg is good with the forehead up. That's okay and a little harder to manipulate. But if he's high a little bit because I'm like hopping, like driving me to the cage. So let's do that. And then I'm going to go right like here. That's not so bad. <laughs> okay, a little sloppy, but that's not the worst takedown defense in the world. So if his head is up, okay, 
what I want you to do, it has to be simultaneous. The stirring the spot. Muscle strength against his neck, a big guy like this, is not enough. It has to be this. Okay? Not this. Okay? I need to penetrate in deep and slide down to straighten his spine out, to make him back arch a little bit. Okay? Feel that? Do you feel a difference now? Yeah. That's what it really has to be like. Okay, so if he's here, go ahead, move a little bit. Feel pretty, pretty real now? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so it's a tilt, but with a wipe. Now, this is not a strike. I don't think anyone's going to notice it, and the ref's not going to know what it is unless he watches this DVD. So in MMA, by all means, go ahead. It's not a point of the elbow to the spine. Okay? In standing, I do the same thing over under sometimes. I'll just hit here and go down. I get a standing arm triangle. I can take the guy with this arm and wipe down that easy. And it's just this. See, see more of GMI? I'm sorry, I know it's not really fair, but if we're in here, lock that hip again, see how I got him arching? All I needed was from strong structure to weak structure. Now some different positions I can play with that. And this is a position where I can play with that if I add the head tilt. But do not do this and this and go, why isn't it working? It has to be simultaneous, okay? Get the spine in and down, slide the spinal wipe and tilt that forehead you just worked with. Remember this? You gotta do this while you're doing that to him. While he's on your leg. While you're hopping around BJ Penn style and defending it. So get it to the outside and then here. That's only if his head's up. His head's really low, you gotta do some other basic stuff or push away, flying, whatever. Okay? Be careful when you fall. Back fall guys, tuck your head. Don't bite your tongue off. Exhale. He needs to work it out to here. Okay? But here's the position. It's not some funky thing like this. You're here with the leg in, you're pitching it lightly between your legs and the forehead's in the middle. Okay? So start in what would be the real position. <laughs> nice. Pull that off MMA, grab the turn the people are like, what is this magical stuff? You're not going to do this live until you drill it and you burn it and it becomes a country. that. <laughs> Okay, let me show you just a couple more times. Okay, this guy's here. Now I gotta decide. If, if this head's here, you know, I can work on other things. Okay? There's guillotines, there's also execution or neck cranks from there, and, and other advanced stuff you can learn on the DVDs as well. But the combat system.com, let me plug my website over The combat system.com, if you guys want to go to my website. I watch some of my TV stunts and film stunts and uh, some of my real fights and stuff like that. So I get this to the outside. Okay, go ahead, drive into me. This is where we ended up. That's a good thing. Okay. Anyone else want to feel it? Okay. Single on my leg. Grab my leg. He's in here. You want? Keep, yeah, keep guys. No, a wrestler's not going to be out here unless he's going really fast for a chain pull. But then again, once people learn my execution or not cranking MMA, they're going to learn not to do that because it's really nasty. Okay, so in general, on singles, head inside is better for MMA. Okay, so if he's here on my chest, I'm going to get it to the outside. If I need to wizard that while I'm hopping around, overhook, I can wizard that for a while. Hop around, he's driving into the cage. Keep your head up. And I can work that wrestling. I can slide into whatever. Okay, wherever it goes, it goes. Mount side, mount the belly. Whatever, thank you. Okay, next one. Single leg. Again, if the head's up a little bit, if it's down again, if it's really tightened down, really interesting, you want your forehead up a little bit. Okay, but you want to tighten the leg. But guys, when you're hopping around, there's space. Okay. Now, if his head's up again, there's another one you can do. That's pretty cool. Warm your neck up, guys. It's that section of the day. Okay, so he's in on my leg. Okay, now my daughter pulled this off on me live the other day. Well, I have the footage up. Oh, really? Same thing. Maybe I'm here on a wizard a little bit or half wizard over hook. I get that to the outside. I'm hopping around. Now we start to apply the combatives world of thinking about serious life and death. Apply that to MMA. 
and even a grappling competition here or there. If it's no gi in advance, not basic, not novice, but if I, it's professional or if it's advanced, hey man, all I did was twist his chin. That's like a neck crank. If it's legal neck cranks, then it, I say it's fair game. Here, you ready for it? I get to the outside. He's driving me around a little bit. All I do is reach, kick down. Now that's the combatives way if I want him to stay standing in case there's multiple opponents. Continue on with this. And, and no one really knows this or really thinks of this stuff. But I mean, instead of just all the basic wrestling, is if you get your balance down and stuff, it may take you a second. No one's going to be like, oh, right away, until you're really advanced. But I mean, I might go here, here, here. I see that his chin's grabbable, okay? And I'm going to go for it. So wrestle me a little bit. Push me in the cage. And I'm down. I'm past the guard. And, you know, it's a good day. From here, and I still got a grip, I can start working the elbows right away, downward elbows. Let's try somebody else. <laughs> Andy wants it. <laughs> yep. Ready? Okay. So he's in here, I'm moving around. Maybe I'm adding those hits and uppercuts and back hits while we're in there. <laughs> okay, I still got his chin. Elbow, elbow, relax, relax. Elbow, elbow, elbow. Elbow right across the jawline. Look for that knockout. Or choke. Okay? So, what I'm doing, I'll go slow this time. What I'm doing, get to the outside. You see the chin's exposed a little bit. The only way it's not is maybe down here, and even then I could probably, but I'm probably going to do stuff like this then. Chin's exposed. I'm going to go for my chin grip, rip like a cobra neck crank, and I'm going to kick my foot down on the side of his leg. Rotate around. I'm going to kick my foot down, scrape, like woman self-defense, scrape his leg with my foot, plant it there, and as a rotating point. Okay, so I want to try and stamp my foot out the direction I want to throw him. Here. I'm gonna kick it down. This this goes here. Here, see this? Now it's like a pivot point. I'm throwing him over, like an Ashi Barai in judo almost. Here. If you can, you keep it. If he's not defending, choke. If you can keep that chin, keep it. If you don't, dude, I just slammed him and I got side mount. That's good. But if you do, you can hold it and elbow that jump. You'll probably get a knockout by the fourth or fifth elbow if you can generate good power in a short distance. And that choke's really, really, really nasty too. So what I wanted you to think about is here, stomp it down as you're twerking. So it's like a kick kickstand here. Okay. I'm on the outside, if I needed to, I could keep good chin pressure, keep his head away, try to fly and get my down. Whatever, hit him, hit him, hit him. If I get that chin, I'm going to whatever. Okay. Yes. This is what the motion is. Okay. Like the hand of a clock. Counter rotation. Okay. Counter clockwise. Or clockwise. Hand and foot at the same time. Okay. Working the unit as one. Nice, you gotta work the leg at, down at the same time. Okay, you, as the, the height of the rip is when your foot plants on the ground. And try, and, try and drag the side of your foot down their leg. Keep that leg stamping. Kickstart that foot down, guys. You gotta keep contact. All right. So I'm here, I'm on the outside. I'm here, quiet, guys. Guys, quiet, please. Here. You're up. So you're driving around a little bit, so it's realistic. Okay, so maybe I didn't keep it, but if I slam a guy this size like that to defend my takedown and in a dominant position, that's some good takedown. <coughs> okay, you gotta learn your wrestling first and your basics first to blow us off. I'm not saying everyone's gonna be like, wow, right away. You will be on noobs. To get it on an advanced guy, thank you, let me try it once on you. To get it on a really advanced guy, it's, 
it may be something. I'll try my bad luck. Okay, so I'm here. There might be wizard here. Maybe hitting, 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 hitting. Where's we moving around? Get it to the outside. Okay. And now, I honestly might have done a different one that time because his head was really low. He didn't, he didn't have his forehead up, if you guys, anyone notice that? His head was really low, so I might have just stuffed it and done wrestling basics or pushed it out and away with a hard whizzer for a flying knee. Okay. His head's a little more up here is what I'm going to go for that or the one I taught earlier. So I'm on the outside, we're moving around. <laughs> okay. Crucifix. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Okay, guys. Next, for a double leg on me. Boom, nice and raw, all right? So you end up in like a front turtle position. Okay, as he's here and he's driving in, or even if we come to a rest, all I have to do, ready, make sure you're at a single, okay? All I gotta do, drive, give me some energy like you're driving in though, so it's realistic. Did I strike him? No, I slapped him with a large surface area. It went like this. Yep. One more time. We're here. Here's my take down the fence. Okay. You alright? Yeah. I don't think that's too bad. Now that, that's not all my power. Double legs. He's here. Okay. Since I was on this side, I'll probably use my left hand. Drive in a little bit. Like you're trying to take me down, turn the corner. Here. Now I can go right away. Get a chin lock. Go over. We're naked. Whatever you want to do. Okay, but look at his base. If I really nail someone, they're going to go flat like he did. Okay, sometimes I'm being a little, believe it or not, I'm being kind of nice. I'm doing this right now. When I could do that, and I could do shoot, sprawl with my body weight at the same time. Now imagine someone shoots in on the double, and I go like that. Now that is not a strike. Is it legal? Boy, I don't know. It's a lot of surface area. Is that really a strike? Really, it's kind of just a maneuver and a slap. I don't think anyone knows what it is, so I think you get away with it for a little while. <laughs> That's what I think. And I think for the street, and for the military, this is one of the nastiest things that, like, uh, special forces that people should learn. Here's your real anti-grappler. To be a good anti-grappler, you got to be a grappler. Catch wrestling, jujitsu, judo, sambo, wrestling. Okay. Does so anyone shoot with their head on the this side? More common side? I don't know. Do you? Okay. So he comes in. I sprawl. Okay. If I need him again, and I work for this cross face, I'm going to maybe take it back here and do something like that. So a really slapped cross face is going to be really effective even if they don't stretch all the way out flat on their stomach. Let's go one more time from our like, knees, so you can drive in if you want. Here, ready? Keep going, keep going. Okay. Breaking his structure. His structure on the ground is very, very weak. Oh, hey, I just saw this. Um, sometimes, against the cage, uh, like Evan Dunn, he's now Sean Sherrick, I'm Evan Dunn, fight from a few years ago. Sometimes a guy, or uh, uh, Diego Sanchez versus BJ Penn. The shoulder hump position. Not quite good enough of a wrestler to get the double leg, to get the takedown. But this guy's just kind of shoulder hump. He's driving in all day long. Okay? Split defense, separated defense, split defense, whatever. I'm defending. He's not so good. I'm pulling up the hands. I'm pulling up the elbows. I'm underhooking. But he's in here a lot of the fight. Not a strong structure. You would never lift something this way. Would you? Is your, old, your mom, old people taught to lift boxes this way at work? Not a strong structure. Ready? Drive into me. Not a strong structure. This somewhat is a strong structure. And even then there's a slight weakness here on the neck. But this is not strong. No one deadlifts this way. You don't go, you know, you gotta be down here. So if he's bent over like that, just in this kind of inner defending and take down here, 
you could do the same thing. See, right now I'm gonna, my, my mind says something else. I'm going to do this with the chin this way right now. I'm going to work three-dimensionally and two different. It depends on what I feel. Oh, now I'm here and I feel his chin's high. It's going to be harder to grab. I'm going to go here and go wherever. You see I'm always kind of landing dominant position. That should be your goal, self-defense, MMA, jiu-jitsu, whatever. You want dominant position right away. Thank you. Um, okay. Now on to cage wrestling. Um, just standing. You know, we're not takedowns. Just pretend someone's driving you. In MMA, how often do you see this? He's resting and going, I'm looking better to the judges. He's round scoring. Okay. Or resting. Don't let your butt, your back stay on the wall. I ended the last seminar this way. I'm going to teach you guys how to do this cool stuff. A lot of times, we are in over-under position. Basics are get to an underhook, turn the corner. Now I'm winning. Now don't you know me. Oh, now he's winning. Oh, oh, oh God, I'm tired. Oh God, I'm tired. Now I'm winning. Rest, rest. Before the referee breaks his heart, hit, hit. Act like I'm trying to do damage. Hit, hit, so the referee doesn't break. That's okay. You gotta know the basics. The basics are under hooking, high under hook, and turn the um, Since the over under is the most common position, one over hook, one under hook, because it's 50 50, uh, that's where we'll start to get. So if I'm here, I got my over hooker wizard, okay, and he's got his under hook, and then we're in here. Maybe I have inside control, bicep control, a lot of guys do elbow control. Now, I might be able to spin off. But he's a big guy. If you put your leg in a little deeper, you'll be able to pin me pretty good. Yeah. So he's here. But think hitting and stuff too. Oh. oh. Very simple. All right. Yeah. Very very simple. Very very simple. If you don't mind. There's someone else wants it. So what here? Um, you got my big gloves on. Great. Let me get my mouth guarded. Uh, what I want you to do. But we're going to be in the place. Your, your goal is to just keep me on the cage, win the round, steal some time. So we're here. Okay, I see I measured him. I still had his throat. I can go to short elbows and I can measure him. Look if I was a southpaw. That would be something really good to do. So, and he was keeping kind of low. If we were just hitting, he might be a little more upright. It would be a little more easier for me to access quicker. So keep up like we're really funny. So I want to be on that side. Be on this side. Okay, so we're in here. I got my overhook. What I'm going to do is just do a little throat strike. And if I can, I power assist it. Like an old figure four, bad foot, ankle lock. People used to teach, so it's no good. Here. I did it, but I always throw it there. If I can get it power assisted, I will drive at an up angle, base leg, and then if you wanted to break away, measure them before you let go. You could just go bing, bing, bing all day. Like Anderson did a chair holding his shorts. We've also seen our little throw grabbing that fight, too. Uh, people don't like that. They, they, mammals, dogs, you grab the throat. Uh, this is legal in MMA, by the way. This is not, but if you just go for a second and then push, are they really going to see? No. If you tap a little bit, I'm not going to kill him. I'm not going to break his trachea. But if you just tap while you grab it, that's okay. You're allowed to base on the throat and hold the head in for ground and pound. Same thing standing. Okay, one more tap. If you don't squeeze the trachea, you could actually hold them. So I'm going to go here, up into the neck. Relax so I can show you. I'm going to go up into the neck. Power assist. He's so big, it's hard to actually get around his arm. Here, base, more I measure, left straight, left straight, left straight, right hook, left straight up, can go to town, show who can, okay? <laughs> so, over hook, here. And uh, we're in here, buddy. See if he's low, well, I can work on his neck, right? So guys aren't going to do that. Unless I'm going for the legs, and then I can split the fence, then I can go here and I can turn them, and I can crease fix the neck crank them, and all kinds of stuff. So you gotta wear when people are fighting. They're either structured strong or they're down low on your legs. Not a lot in between. Right, anyway, we're in here. I could do the hits too, try to break the structure too. Like I taught you guys here, 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 block that hip. 
He's a strong guy. It might be hard to do. Overhook. Boom, strike. Power assist. Here, choke him out a little bit. Boom. Boom. And elbow. And elbow. Okay? Um, go to the other side. Go to the other side just to get it. We're in here fighting. I got inside position. You knee me. Hit punch me a little bit. And here. Boom. Boom. Whoop, there's my opportunity. Here, timing's everything in life. Walk. Okay, very simple. Hold the hook a little. Little throw and turn. Okay? Okay. That's an over. No, we got another stroke. Nice. This is certainly good for self defense yep. combatants as well. Yep. All right. All right. All right. So it's going to be. Oh, yeah, oh, wait. So it's going to be. Good, right? Yep. Come on. All right. As long as you squeeze, this is illegal, this is not. So I start with illegal and go to legal. Okay, so this is illegal? Holding's okay. You can actually, you're actually allowed to do this until they guys get this DVD and they change it. They go, oh, that's not, that's dirty. Right, so I'll change it some Right? So. Look at those short elbows coming off there, holding them for long. Knee me, just in the head, since you don't get gloves on, we'll hit in the head. But we need to do the same, same situation, right? Or even the worst situation. Sometimes if the guy's not just trying to take down a cage, it doesn't happen that much. I just got taken to the cage and I suck at wrestling. Well, he's really good at wrestling and he's got double underhooks. Sometimes the guy's either going to be up here, pin me, pin me, rest, and then go for a short double and jump down fast on my legs to rip my legs off the cage. Or he may just hold it. I've seen a couple fights where the guy's just like doing this and the other guy's just kneeing him all day. And it's just like, decision city, uh, you know, he's winning all day long. It goes on for two minutes before the rest breaks it up now, you know? So, whether I'm one overhook, I'm in here in a better position, overhook and bicep control, elbow control, wrist control, inside position, or even if he has dominant position, double underhooks here. So your goal is just pin me in the cage, and to hit me in wrestling. Wow! Wow! A little harder. Okay. So I did his chin. Okay. Uh, keep your head forward. Here. Okay. Only because the next one's going to be here. <laughs> okay. So wrestle him here. Here. Head position. We're wrestling. We're fighting. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we're up here wrestling. Maybe I got the overhook, maybe I don't. Okay. You don't necessarily want to do that. So keep up right. Okay. Just realistic. Okay. Alright, I got it. I don't know if my my thumb got anywhere it shouldn't have. It works. Okay. You say it's effective. Okay. Um, anyone else? I'll go a little softer just to just demonstrate it now. I just want to show you the stuff works. So even if he's here, I'm going to get my hand in for a chin grab and a head twist. Up, angle, twist, here. Okay? So. Let's say this side. So even if I got an overhook now, I got an overhook, let's go over in here. So we're in here this side. Maybe it's hard to get in, we're fighting for that overhook, that underhook here. I can't quite get the underhook, but I can get his chin. Okay. Measure, hit him. Okay. So double unders, we're fighting for the positions. So now this is this is great. He's got perfect position now. As a pinning position, he's really good. Okay. So actually, I'm gonna have trouble getting his chin. So this happens too. So someday you'll get to this level. <laughs> That would have stopped most people. He had really good position. Okay, that's a really good wrestling style for wrestling basics and for the other stuff I'm teaching you. So there's other options when you go to a higher level. That one's really hard to understand. So I'll only show that one more time. 
Yeah. He's bringing me here. Okay. Um, so what are you technically doing? Scott? Are you just pushing down? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not the strength. Okay, I can, I can, I'll show it on other guys too if you want to see it. It's actually technically three. So now where Scotty is, this is more what I was trying to show you. If I can get to the chin here, grab, twist up, because you can't fight that. Try and get away, Scotty. Now it's your only way. Now if I hit cap both hands, you can't really go. He's going to struggle. And I'm measuring for the follower. This is a head twist. This is from combatives. Even in World War II, they taught this to many militaries. Okay, well, I can get under here. Now the throat strike might be easier. It depends, guys. It definitely depends. Maybe I head wrestle in here so I can slide this in to them briefly. Head twist. Okay. So it depends. We're going to put all these together. Okay. So this is just a simple head twist. It's just getting under the chin. Sometimes I'd go to the throat or I'd go to a neck fold. We're going to do in a minute. It depends on that position. But if I can get under that chin and whip, like they break people's necks in the movies, you know, up, up angle is important, especially against the bigger guys. Okay? Get that on big. Just twist. So, the open here, just say the open. Watch what I'm doing. Here, so if I just came up to so go, go, go. Okay, nice and easy the first couple times. Let the guy feel before you come. Go. Alright, so it was hand on the chin here, and then here? No, one around. Oh, okay. Make sure you take that chin when you turn the corner at an upward angle, guys. It really helps if you're going against one of us three. It's really going to help. You got more drill. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to show realism now. I'm not going to have it perfect. I'm not going to have it perfect every time. It has to be different. But remember, you don't want to necessarily do that. Or start doing it. So just you want to drill it over under or double under. You know, I'm just going to let me out with just with basics. So go both kid and underhook, at least one underhook, that's an overhook, at least one underhook, and keep your pen hit with your other side. That's your ball. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Put that one Maybe work. Defended, defended, defended. Work it out. So I got to put them all together. Everything takes strength. One move doesn't want to grab it, you got to go to the next one. Sorry. Yeah, so pin me again. Keep that same position. Just pin me. Just pin me. <laughs> okay, so Glad, next last one guys right on my other DVDs, self-defense DVD. That I've used on a couple guys, small guy, just did it on a big guy. You gotta do like all these in combination. Just like grappling, if one move doesn't work, he hides his chin, he starts to feel this, he goes here. You gotta go to another one. 
And maybe all that opens up just a basic underhook turn. You got out, that's okay. Remember, your goal is to get your butt off the cage and not lose me. But once you learn them, it's going to take repetition, you put them all together. Okay. Now, what Scotty was doing right, look at his, no, no. yeah, go where you went, right away. Where do you feel comfortable? You're all right? Okay. This is what Scotty likes. He did that to me earlier, he did it again. It's called a habit. If I recognize it the first time, then take advantage of it. Next round when he gets me there later in the run, I'm going to take advantage of it. <laughs> Anyone notice where his head position is? Sideways. Oh, we got answers for that. So what I want to do is get a karate chuck. I call it the neck pull. Okay, I did it to him nasty last year. And he still got the same habit, sideways. So if the guy's over his shoulder, not that it's wrong, but I like to keep somewhere in between and watch out for shoulder strikes and, and everything. Got he's over here. So I got this side overhook, this side overhook, whatever. This side's free. We're in here again, but he's this way. I'm going to hit karate chop with my wrist. Really? I'm doing like reverse, uh, uh, what do you call it? That's spearhead. Reach in. But uh, with the wrist, the back of his neck. Now, that's not a strike. It's going to be so fast, no one sees it. Okay, and even if he stands or keeps standing or whatever, it's fine. Okay, someone else? Now put your head over this shoulder. See, now he's got a good pinning position with his knee. I like this. He feels really safe here, especially with double overhooks. Okay? So as soon as I hit, I either got to be wrestling in, well, I find out this guy's a better wrestler. I'm trying to pummel. I'm trying to get off. God, he's strong. Oh, he's tired. I can't use wrestling strength to get off. I can use science biomechanics. Okay? Okay. You want to feel it? He didn't ask. I doubt you guys will fall all the way, but I bet I'll be able to move my butt off the cage. Got my, that's cool. I do that to my kids in the house. So just get a good position, be strong, and you're here. So I'm having trouble. Okay, I'm having trouble. I'm watching. Are you really trying or no? Sort of? Yeah, give me a little more. Just just keep pinning me with some yeah, strength. Okay, so I'm here. Oh, oh, oh God, he's pinning me good. Oh, that's a word. Alright? Okay. <laughs> Knock him out on the fall with your chest. That's even better. <laughs> that one you felt it kind of more real, right? Yeah. And you were pinning me with some energy at least. Anyone else? I want to get you on the other shoulder. Just to show it. So guys, what I'm hitting with is this. I'm doing like weird salute. And the other one goes on top to fold his neck. So if he's here, but he's looking this side, so see it's hard to grab his chin. It's even hard to get into a stroke. So if he's more here, I'm going to go same side. He's on with the back of the neck hit. This one comes on top for a full, like a rear naked choke kind of. Okay? So here, boom. Here, boom. Remember, simultaneous. Simultaneous hands. Work your body as a unit and turn your butt off the cage. Okay, go. And a knee into his middle. So I'm in here and we're in over under. This is where I want to be. I don't just want to be out here because he can skate his butt, kind of skate and scoot around, scoot out. Yeah. So especially when you're tired, and this is when guys usually drive a guy to the cage. Especially when you're tired, pin him. The easiest way to pin him and not use a lot of upper body strength is getting this knee in the middle and a high underhook. Don't have low underhooks. Under the underhook, under the armpit, high underhook. Okay, and knee. That's good for pinning. And then you work the other side to hitting, coming over the top of the elbow, little knee strikes and whatever. Now you could switch and knee and stuff, but anytime you come off with your hips, is like giving up hip pressure, sorry, and side mount, it allows him to skate out. You know, even when a guy's really strong, if he gives you a route to put your butt out, that's how you get out of a lot of submissions, that's how you get off the cage a lot, guys. Just turn your hips, get your butt out. So we're in here. Okay, this is already a good position. 
Now, if I keep this higher, it's a better position. And if I learn how to head wrestle, just basic wrestling is head wrestling, I get under this chin. Especially if he's like, uh, uh, you know, a tall guy, it's even easier if he's taller than you. So I'm going to get in here. Now I'm really pinning him, and his day sucks, and I go to him. Okay. Now, I figure if, if we're in here, and I learn how to head wrestle and get this position, and now it's, it's really my body weight pinning him instead of muscular, so you have the stance and the head. If I can do this, I, I thought about three dimensions. Well, what can you do on the ground that guys aren't doing against the cage? Well, go back to the basic grinding, catch wrestling style, early MMA style. Put a gable grip in, keep your head up, and I'm going to pin him with this across the throat and do a throat choke. Now, if I can tap him or tire him enough out, that's great. If I can just keep him there, that's great. Sometimes you might just be able to slide it in and keep it as a pinning position. As a pinning position, you want to keep your elbow to the far side to the cage, just like you would on the ground, just like you do in his guard, or you could get arm triangle choke, so head and arm triangle choke. Be aware of that, head and arm choke, okay? If I go here, just got to push my arm across. Oh, here, and arm triangle, very good. So when it, same thing on the ground, guys, keep that aware. I taught this last year on the ground, like just how to mess with the guy in his guard. If you focus on the elbow tip to the other side, you're pretty safe. So I'll go here, and I can just slide it in if I get lucky and get, come up here. No, it says the other way, that's really nasty. And I can knee from there, and I can even do short elbow strikes. Sorry. Um, if I get underneath it, which it may be easier to wrestle head position, give me the space to put my arm, slide it in like a choke, gable grip that, and turn up the volume on them, really choke them, then short elbows and knees. Okay, I like the other side because it opens up the liver. So I got high under hook, I like to grab here while I'm just sitting in position and wrestling, wrestling, or hand wrestling, or inside positioning, or kneeing and playing this game. I like this because the knee to the liver, okay? And when it punches and elbows open up, you use them. But if I can wrestle under here and add this in, now it's great. I can just knee, pin him again with this leg, knee, pin him again with this leg, knee, knee, try and wrestle that one. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. Whoa. Get out of here. Yeah, boom. So the whole time I'm kneeing him, see I'm making his day suck. Now if he really spends a lot of energy, if he escapes out of my, gets his hips out, escapes past my elbow, I'm not saying it's not counterable, but it took a lot of energy. And this is like bone structure and not that muscular, so it's good because he has to clear all the way to this side. And if I focus on keeping that in the cage, you might end up with some nice cage rash. Okay, you might get some elbow chipping and some blood, that's okay. Maybe that's gripping without your fingers and toes. If you put that tip through the nice little hole, and when you're tired, it helps pin him. Okay, because this would be holding inside of something if it was a hole in the cage. Sweet, it's saving you some energy in a fight. That's good. Also, from this pinning position I want you guys to play with in a second, you can keep, keep in mind, the last 30 seconds of the round, or if you're like a master grappler and you want to risk it getting it to the ground, since he's such a better striker than you or something, come up top of the shoulder is always a good control position. And if you double this up here, I can probably take him down just with my arms. I just call that an arm liver takedown. Okay. Just by locking his shoulder. So it's not power. If I did this, it's power. But if I come with my hand over the shoulder, it really locks him. And if I double it up, I can do an arm lever. Okay. Now, if you can't quite get it, or you're also good at judo, if you want to do like an arm lever position, high underhook, double it up really quick, the last 30 seconds of the round, turn, do the lever, and then uchimata that leg, and really launch him, you could. Okay? Uchimata is like this, kick back, lean down. You don't, I don't want anyone doing that now. If you do the shoulder lever, that's fine. But I don't really want you, but I want you to know it's available. So we're in here, we're in here, I'm here, and then I want to go. Okay? So, 30 seconds, 30 seconds, guys, on this. I'm across. Pass this arm, or if he attempts an arm triangle. 
Let, let's just you sliding out. Pretend you're sliding out. As he goes here, if I can manage to switch it into a guillotine wrap type thing, whenever I get this position on a guy, I try to like snap his head down, roll his head to like a guillotine position. I grab the chin for the cobra neck crank. Okay. So if he's getting out at that corner, you got other game. Anytime he's here and you're holding him, pinning him, if he starts to get out, I'll try to wrap him down. If I got that, I already have the under hook. I turn the corner, cobra neck crank. Okay, so just every counter has a counter pretty much. That was taught briefly last year and it's on the grappling two pack. Okay, at thecombatsystem.com. Now, what you're doing is going 60 to 70% at most, live against the cage with no takedowns though, other than the shoulder lever. And that shoulder lever, again, is not to pull, but to come on top and lock. Okay. Let's try and keep standing up. Wrestle me a little bit. Now wrestle me a little bit. Okay. The difference is just an inch of pressure this way. We're coming on top and pressuring down. Now it's a lock. Okay. So come on top of that. I don't want any attempts at takedowns other than that. No going for the double or the single. I just want you to cage strike with knees and punches to the body. No punches to the head, nothing to the head. Just light knees to the legs and body and light punches to the legs and body and back and stuff. Okay, go. Get him. Nice. Okay, rotate down. Take one step down. Someone come out at the end and you go in. Last round. Get on somebody, get on someone. I don't care, go. You can still twist that big head. Don't use power, use technique. If you want to pin him, get the knee in the center, get the arm on the throat. Nice, beautiful. Okay, play it. Good job, guys. Okay, now we gotta go. Keep his chin. And then you can knock him out with elbows across the jawline. Boom, dropping your body weight. Or choke with your forearm and elbow tip on the artery. This is very effective. Push me in the cage. Around a little bit. All I do is reach, kick them. Now that's the combative way if I wanted to stay standing in case there's multiple opponents. Mm -hmm. So drive me around a little bit so it's realistic. What's that? We're moving around. <laughs> okay. Cruise next. Uh, thank you. <laughs> and drive. Then I'd probably go to like here and get the knockout and then knees or whatever. But I'd probably go to the elbows immediately. So you could be overhooked in here. And looking for the how works this. See, I'm strong in this position. Pinning me in here. He's whatever. Oh god. <laughs> okay, and that's that's life. Okay. This is combative stuff I teach for you know law enforcement street, that kind of thing. You'll learn this later. I can really strike this guy. You're ah. folding now. Also, maybe I get in here and he's kneeing me and whatever. This is totally MMA legal here. I can do this in terms of Okay, people do not think a neck really should you, sorry. You right? <laughs> <laughs> so you go ahead and hit me a little bit, we'll fight. Shh, shh, go, we'll fight. Ah. 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 Okay. This is stuff. This is the next level of MMA. So someday you'll get to this level. <laughs> Good. 
so I'm here. Oh, oh, oh God, he's beating me good. Oh, sorry. Dave, it in now. So it's realistic. Nice. I'm doing this right now. When I could do that, and I could do shoot, sprawl with my body weight at the same time. Now imagine someone shoots in on the double, and I go like that. We're here. Here's my take down the hands. Turn the corner. Here. Now if I need to get and I work for this cross face, I'm gonna maybe take it back here. 